Hey VH Bio kids, this is Mr. Wolf, and today we're we'll talking about Lab 3.2, What Affects Photosynthesis. Now photosynthesis is probably the most important chemical reaction that takes place on this planet. All life depends on it. If you look above me, this is the equation for photosynthesis. Here we can see that we take carbon dioxide and water, and with light energy we combine them into sugar and give off oxygen. Now below me you'll see the, the leaf of a plant. Now leaves are the primary organ of plants that undergo photosynthesis by taking in carbon dioxide and water, absorbing light, and giving off oxygen gas, and then storing the energy from that light as glucose. So in this investigation we'll be using spinach leaves as our plant organism. Now to measure photosynthesis we'll be using a CO2 gas sensor made by PASCO. Now this sensor measures the amount of carbon dioxide present in the air and so we should see as photosynthesis occurs a decrease in the amount of carbon dioxide. Now to show you how this PASCO sensor works, I'll turn it over to Cynthia. Hi, my name is Cynthia Sargent and I'm the biology curriculum developer and trainer here at PASCO. And today I'd like to share with you our plant respiration and photosynthesis lab. Traditionally, labs might be done with Elidia, putting Elidia in water with an indicator like bromthymol blue and waiting 24 hours to see results. The advantage of this lab is it helps students visualize what's happening directly to the carbon dioxide levels. They can see it in a matter of seconds to minutes, they don't have to wait a long time, and they can see on a graph display the actual change in carbon dioxide helping them relate carbon dioxide directly to the processes of photosynthesis and respiration. The materials are very simple for the lab. We're going to use spinach that was just purchased at the grocery store a carbon dioxide sensor in the sampling bottle that came along with it, some foil, and a lamp. So to get started, I already connected my carbon dioxide sensor to my computer via the Sparklink. So my carbon dioxide sensor is already connected to my computer through the extension cable, and I'm going to calibrate my carbon dioxide sensor before beginning the lab. So I have a sample of fresh air in the bottle. I'm just going to plug the bottle with the carbon dioxide sensor and there's just a one button calibration for this sensor. I'm going to hold the green button down for a couple seconds and there's a green light on the calibration button that will remain static and not blinking during the time of calibration. When you see the light begin blinking again, then the calibration is complete. I have this SparkView software open on the laptop computer, and the page will display the carbon dioxide concentration. It's not recording any data at this point, but it will display the carbon dioxide concentration for me. When calibration is complete, I'll see a number around 400 parts per million. Now that the calibration is complete, which I know from the light beginning to blink again, I'm going to remove the carbon dioxide sensor from my sampling bottle. I'm going to place one or two spinach leaves into the bottle. It just kind of depends on the size of your spinach leaves. I've gently blotted the leaves so that they're mostly dry. And ideally, we would have the spinach leaves lay flat. I'm going to put spinach leaf just through the opening of the bottle and I'll go ahead and put a second one in. And I'll lay them flat just to get the maximum amount of surface area that can be exposed to the light. And take a square of aluminum foil Plug my sampling bottle with the spinach leaves inside with the carbon dioxide sensor. I'm going to place the sensor and the bottle flat on top of the piece of foil. Then I'll arrange my light. I've put into the desk lamp here a compact fluorescent light bulb. And I'll adjust the light so it will shine directly on the leaves within the sampling bottle. Okay. Before I begin data collection, I'm going to need to open up a page or build a page in the SparkView program. I'm going to choose Build. 
My carbon dioxide gas sensor is listed. I'm going to click on CO2 concentration and I want to create a graph display of that. So I'm going to click on the graph. But I also am interested in seeing a digits display of carbon dioxide concentration. So I'm also going to select the number button here and that's going to give me a digits display. So we'll be able to see a graph and the parts per million in digits as the data is collected. Okay. For this lab it will take five to ten minutes to collect data. So I'm going to change the sample rate. Right now it's one hertz. I'm going to change that to seconds and I'm going to have it collect data every two seconds. If you'd like to have the data collection stop at an automatic time, you can set a stop time, say three minutes. Okay. So I'm now ready to begin data collection. I'm going to turn on the light and I'm going to let the light shine directly on the bottle with the spinach leaves inside for about 30 seconds or so. The carbon dioxide sensor can be affected by light and this will allow us to have a stable reading inside that bottle before beginning to collect data. When we're ready to collect data, we're just going to hit the play button to begin data collection. Now you can see a few data points being collected near the axis of the graph there. We're going to want to scale the axes to be able to see the greatest view of our change in carbon dioxide concentration for the bottle. So I open up the graph tools and I'm going to choose the scale axis button. And as the data is collected, the scale of the y-axis will adjust to the new data points. You can also see in the upper right hand corner a display of the carbon dioxide concentration in parts per million. And you can see how that is changing as time goes on. Thanks Cynthia, that was some great stuff. Well, bio students, I hope you found this video helpful. I look forward to investigating with you what affects photosynthesis.